Oh God, dogs are dead. Two dead dogs. This was the first thing the Romeoville officers saw when they did a wellness check on the Roland family. Then it got even worse. When they busted into the family home, they found a family of four brutally executed. The horrific scene also included their three dogs, all wiped out in this mind-blowing act of violence. Little did anyone know, this was just the tip of the iceberg in a crazy story of lies, manipulation, and next-level betrayal. Do you have anything to do with this? You know, th this is almost a Hollywood plot. This is the shocking story of the Romeoville murders. It all started with a welfare check on September 17th, 2023. Alberto Roland hadn't turned up at work that day, and his boss was worried. He was the kind of guy who everyone relied on. Definitely not the type to announce his absence. As they normally do, the officers who turned up at the address peeked inside the home. That's what you do before you bust in or even knock. But this time, the two officers saw a shocking and heartbreaking scene. Dogs are dead. Two dead dogs. It was clear these poor babies weren't sleeping. Heartbroken but alert, the officers knew they needed to make it into that house fast. Something terrible had clearly happened. Officers found a crack in the window and overturned tables inside. The first sign something was awry. Inside, a shocking scene greeted them. Alberto Roland, Zoradia Bartomoli, and their two young sons, aged seven and nine, had been executed military style. The crime scene was straight up nightmare fuel. We're talking 20 bullets sprayed about and red marks on every wall. The place was trashed, furniture flipped, walls tagged up, looking like a burglary gone wrong. But when the cops started digging, they realized this was way darker than your average break-in. They were about to stumble into some seriously twisted stuff. No one in the neighborhood heard a single gunshot that night. The eerie silence raised questions. Did the killer use a silencer? Were they experienced with firearms? The once peaceful community of Romeoville, Illinois, was suddenly plunged into fear and uncertainty. Parents held their children closer and neighbors began to look at each other differently, wondering if the perpetrator was living among them. Horrible things happen when a community loses trust in one another. But it wouldn't be long before authorities would find the unlikely monster behind it all. As the forensics team searched the crime scene, they discovered crucial evidence that would lead them down a dark and twisted path. They pieced together their cell phone records, footage from nearby security cameras, and data from license plate readers. Slowly, a chilling picture emerged of the events leading up to that fateful night. What they uncovered was shocking. A complex murder plot planned by a suburban couple, so intricate and disturbing that it stunned even veteran detectives. At the heart of this horrifying story were Nathan Huey Jr., a former security guard, and his fiance, Emeralinda Palomo. As investigators dug deeper, they revealed a tale of betrayal, jealousy, and manipulation. The suspect, Nathaniel Huey Jr. and his fiance, Irma Linda Palomo, fled to Oklahoma after the crime. It was a chain of events that would ultimately end in the senseless killing of an innocent family. The more they uncovered, the clearer it became that this case was far more complicated and disturbing than anyone could have imagined. The Romeoville Police Department ended up releasing a record explaining the shocking twist in the case. Emeralina Palomo, who everyone initially thought might be a victim, turned out to be the mastermind behind the killings. The police report we first brought you yesterday shows a lengthy past several years where she created multiple fake profiles in an effort to persuade Huey that he was being watched by a dangerous Mexican cartel and that he needed to carry out the murders. This revelation rocked the entire town to its core and left even the most experienced detectives completely blindsided. People who had known Palomo for years struggled to reconcile the image of the seemingly normal suburban woman with the calculated criminal mastermind she turned out to be. The extent of her deception was almost unbelievable. For nearly two years before the murders took place, she had been busy creating and managing multiple fake online identities. Each of these made-up characters played an important part in her elaborate plan. 
Using a mobile app that could generate different phone numbers, Palomo created an entire cast of fictional people, including Mexican drug cartel bosses, threatening hitmen, and skilled computer hackers. Through these fake identities, she crafted a story so believable that it eventually pushed Huey to commit an act of violence that no one could have imagined. Palomo's method of manipulating Huey was as clever as it was disturbing. She pretended to be various members of a made-up drug cartel using disposable phones and messaging apps to bring her network of fake personas to life. Through these characters, she slowly convinced Huey that he was being constantly watched and controlled by a dangerous criminal organization. The amount of detail she put into her deception was astounding and went far beyond just sending messages. The fake accounts also sent threatening messages to Rolona and Bartolome, threatening their children if she didn't stop her affair with Huey. Palomo created fake news articles and entire websites to make her stories seem more real. She even used software to change her voice, leaving threatening voicemail messages that sounded like they came from different people. All of this was done to support her story of a powerful, widespread cartel that had its eyes on Huey. The level of planning and effort she put into this deception was so intense that it is hard to imagine how someone can maintain such an elaborate lie for so long. Palomo's crazy plan came from a deep fear of losing Huey, her partner of eight years. When she found out he was cheating with Zoraida Bartolome, she lost it. Instead of confronting him or leaving, she created this whole fake world to keep him under her control. She started this based on the report to keep him faithful in his infidelity to her. Huey had no clue that the dangerous cartel members he thought were watching his every move were just Paloma sitting behind a screen and pulling all of the strings. The victims of this horror story were caught in a mess of cheating and jealousy that they didn't even know about. This affair set off Palomo's dark plan to control Huey and get rid of the woman she saw as a threat. On September 16th, 2023, things took a terrifying turn. Huey broke into the Roland Bartolome home, armed and thinking he was following cartel orders. He was really just doing exactly what Palomo told him to do through her fake cartel character. What happened next was beyond brutal. Huey shot Alberto first, then he found Zoraida and killed the two boys huddled together in another room. The family's three dogs didn't escape this senseless violence either. It was a complete wipeout of innocent lives, all because of one woman's jealousy and manipulation. While Palomo's manipulation was extreme, Huey's actions were beyond horrific. Manipulated or not, it takes a particular kind of person to carry out such a brutal act. Taking out the entire family, including young children and even pets, reveals a deeply disturbing side to Huey's character. No amount of manipulation can fully excuse or explain away the choice to commit such an act of violence. This tragedy highlights not just the dangers of manipulation, but also the capacity for extreme violence that can lurk within seemingly ordinary people. Trying to cover up what he'd done, Huey spray painted the walls and trashed the place, hoping it would look like a burglary gone bad. Meanwhile, Palomo sat waiting in her car outside, watching her twisted plan play out just as she'd imagined. Soon after the killings, both Huey and Palomo were hauled in for questioning. The difference between them during the interviews was striking and creepy. Huey was a nervous wreck when the cops talked to him about his job. And the same thing happened in the interrogation room. Did you have anything to do with it? No. Okay. Nobody was threatening anybody. He could not keep it together as they grilled him about where he was at the night of the murders and what was really going on with Zoraida. Huey's story was full of holes and he kept trying to dodge the tough questions. When asked if he had any guns, he flat out lied and said no, even though he did own a security company. He also refused to let the police check his car, probably because he knew what they would find. Think about this still on your side of it. Yeah. So I'll think about this as me. Yeah. What would be my argument later on if the police kept calling me, harassing me, or kept saying that I'm the one, I'm the one? I'd be like, well, no, I'd let you look at my car. 
I gave you a DNA sample. There's no blood in my car. Exactly. But Huey continued to deny permission. The way he acted, all fidgety, avoiding eye contact, set off major alarm bells for the investigators. They were already putting the pieces together from his phone records and security camera footage, and Huey's behavior just made him look even more suspicious. Palomo, in contrast, played it cool during her interview. She acted all shocked and upset when they suggested Huey might be involved. We're investigating a murder. She came up with this super detailed story about where they were on the night of the murders. He goes to Milwaukee, Bristol, and there's, it's not paint, it's aerosol. According to her, they'd been drinking at home when Huey crashed out in the garage and her in her room. She even went as far as giving a play-by-play -play of their day, talking about trips to the store and hanging out with family. Her act was so good that at first, the cops thought she might just be a witness, not a suspect. Paloma lied like a pro, throwing in all these little details and even getting emotional at times. She even pretended to be worried about Huey cheating, acting like a concerned fiance who had just found out about the affair. But the freedom didn't last long. Two days after the police let them go, on September 20th, 2023, Huey and Palomo must have realized the cops were on to them. They took off, leaving Illinois and heading west. Their attempt to escape turned into a wild high-speed chase in Katosa, Oklahoma. It is crazy to think that just before this, security cameras at a Walmart caught them shopping together looking totally chill and even smiling. They had no idea they were about to have their final showdown with the police. As police cars chased them down the highway, all the tension and fear that had been building up for days finally exploded. The chase ended in a violent crash when Huey lost control and slammed into a barrier. Get out of the car! In the chaos that followed with their car going up in flames, Huey made one last desperate move. Maybe he finally realized how Paloma had been playing him, or maybe he just couldn't face what was coming. Either way, Huey turned his gun on Palomo. In a twisted turn of events, the woman who had planned this whole deadly scheme became its final victim. With police sirens getting closer, Huey then turned the gun on himself. Just like that, the manhunt was over, ending in a brutal murder side. The whole fiery crash and the gunshots that followed were caught on police body cams, adding a grim final chapter to this already tragic story. Armed and dangerous murder suspect. Out of where? Illinois, I think. She's the missing person in danger. He's the murder suspect. As detectives put all the pieces together leading up to the murders and the couple's escape attempt, they finally understood why Palomo did what she did. Her elaborate lie came from a desperate need to keep Huey from cheating again. When they looked through Palomo's texts and emails, they saw a woman completely eaten up by jealousy and scared of being left alone. Instead of confronting Huey about his affair or just ending things, Things, she built this whole fake world where she could control everything he did. As detectives dug into Palomo's digital life, they uncovered the full scale of her deception. She had set up dozens of fake social media accounts, email addresses, and phone numbers, each one pretending to be a different member of her made-up cartel. Using these fake identities, she bossed Huey around, threatened him, and totally warped his sense of reality. She'd send messages at all hours, making sure Huey always felt like he was being watched and pressured. Palomo didn't stop at just sending texts. She used tech to make her lie even more convincing. She used software to change her voice, leaving scary voicemails that sounded like they were from cartel enforcers. She even edited photos to create fake evidence of cartel activities and make it look like Huey was involved. In one super creepy move, she faked her own kidnapping to gain even more control over Huey and push him toward violence. She had basically created an entire fake world, making Huey truly believe he was working for a dangerous criminal organization. This belief is what ultimately led him to commit those horrible murders, thinking he was following cartel orders and trying to protect himself from being killed. It was like Palomo had directed a terrifying movie, with Huey as the unsuspecting lead actor who thought it was all real. As Romeoville and the whole country tried to make sense of this shocking case, 
case, people started talking about how to spot the warning signs of abusive and manipulative behavior. The tragic story of the Roland Bartolome family reminds us all how important it is to pay attention to signs of unstable behavior in the people around us. This case highlighted several red flags we should all watch out for. Extreme jealousy and possessiveness, like Palomo's obsession with controlling Huey, can be the first step towards more serious controlling behavior. Manipulators often try to isolate their victims from friends and family, just as Huey became more and more cut off from others as he got sucked into Palomo's fake world. Gaslighting and twisting reality, which Palomo took to a whole new level, can make a person doubt their own judgment and lose touch with what's real. People being manipulated might show sudden mood changes or act in ways that seem out of character, like how Huey reportedly became erratic and secretive in the months before the murders. Secrecy and unexplained absences are common in a of relationships, and both Huey and Palomo showed this behavior. Any kind of threats or intimidation, even if they seem indirect, should be taken seriously. Palomo's use of technology to control Huey reminds us to be careful about how our devices and online presences can be used against us. Creating false or elaborate lies like Palomo's entire fake cartel world is a major red flag. Watch out for people who can't take responsibility for their actions and always play the victim, like Palomo did in her police interview. Finally, pay attention to how behavior escalates over time. Palomo's actions went from jealousy to complex manipulation to orchestrating murder, showing how abusive behavior can get worse if it's not stopped. The Romeoville murders show us what can happen when jealousy, manipulation, and violence go unchecked. It's a wake-up call for all of us to be more alert, to speak up when something seems off, and to reach out to people who might be struggling. Let's use this tragedy to make real changes. By raising awareness, promoting healthy relationships, and building strong support networks, we can work to prevent future tragedies. This way, we can create something positive from this terrible loss and ensure that Alberto, Zoraida, and their sons didn't die in vain. Hey you guys, thanks for watching. Leave a thoughtful comment for those lost and let me know how you think we can help ourselves and keep each other safe. Catch you soon and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.